Hello makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. Now today we're going to work with a medium we haven't yet introduced on this channel. I've used it several times in my own work, but I want to share some of the magic of working with India inks. Now as you can see, not all India ink is black. We have all sorts of different colors. Uh, we have the full spectrum of the rainbow, including some very bright colors. We'll get a chance to work with these today. But the cool thing about working with India inks is their properties. Now they behave a little bit differently than what we might experience with paint, even acrylic paint. And I want to just share with you just a, a couple things just to be aware of about working with India inks. I'm going to start, I have a, a piece of paper here that I've already put some colors down. I put some red and some blue here. Let me grab my paintbrush and I'm going to drop a, let's put a little green up here. And we'll just put a line in here. Now, what I want to share with you here is that when we're working with India inks, the when it's wet, when I've just placed it down in the paper like it is now, it is still highly water soluble. I'm going to grab a paper towel here and let's just dip it into our, our water here. And if I want to, I can come in here and I can really move it around. I can use it almost like it was watercolor and I can really create a soft edge and smear it around depending on what my needs are. All right, so that's pretty cool if that's what I want to do. Now the other thing, and this is what I wanted to show you, is that once the India ink has dried, as has these different spots that I created a while back, if I come in here now with a wet paper towel, same kind of difference, and hit these things up, they're, they're not going anywhere. So once the ink dries, it is waterproof. It is not water soluble any longer. So the cool thing about working with India inks is that it does give you some flexibility to work with them almost like watercolors. And once it's dried, everything stays where it's supposed to stay, and uh, you don't have to worry about these things getting wet or getting damaged as you put layers down, etc. in the future. Now, two other things I just want to share with you, just as a point of interest, is when we talk about the solubility of these different inks and what that means. I'm going to take a, a I have just an empty eyedropper here, and I'm going to pull up a little bit of water, and I'm going to drop this water onto one of my cards here. And let's just do that. And if I take my card and kind of tilt it a little bit, you may not be able to see this on camera, but I'm just trying to create, create some rivulets with uh, the water. And there we go. Let's go that way. Let's see if I can draw it that way. There we go. Come on. Come on. <laughs> there we go. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is I want to show you what happens if we now drop some... Uh, Drop a little bit of our ink on there, just making basically a, a wet X, as it were. There we go. Now, if I come in here, again, I'm just going to use my eyedropper, and I'm going to come into uh, a little reservoir of inks that I have over here. I'm going to pick up some of the red, not too much, just a little bit, and I'm going to drop it in the middle of that watery area. Watch what happens and how quickly. Look at that. It goes and it fills in the water that's already on the card in this case, and I can doctor it up a little bit with concentrated ink if I really want to advance it a little bit further. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now we can also, if we wanted to add a secondary color, and I'll just do that in here. Let me just clean this out real fast. And uh, let's say I wanted to add a little bit of yellow in here for whatever reason. I could pick up a little bit of that, and I could also come in here and drop it and say, let's put a little yellow here as well. And, Let's create something. And again, this two-tone look is entirely up to us, what we want to be able to do with it. But the point simply is that as this dries, what we're going to see here, the effect of the colors mixing is also going to dry and become permanent. Now, I want to show you one other thing, which is just a little bit weird, but uh, an important thing I suppose to understand as well. And that is the solubility of these inks is not restricted to just working with water. Let me move this out of the way. I'm going to grab a new card. And I want to come in here, and this time uh, I'm going to reach in to with my uh, with my fresh dropper, and I'm going to go into a bath of rubbing alcohol. Yeah, that's what we're going to be using here, and I'm going to put the rubbing alcohol here. Now you can already see if you're looking at the card that the rubbing alcohol soaks into the paper very quickly, as opposed to the water, which kind of stayed on the surface. We can actually see what it looks like. Now what's very cool about this, I'll go back to my. Uh, other dropper which already has colors in it. If I were to pick up a little bit more of that, say red, and drop it in here, look at how it differs. It's almost like the alcohol and the India ink are like oil and water. It slides away from it. So it's very weird to try to do what we tried to do before, which is to disperse the ink. It actually kind of globs it together. Now, that being said, 
if I were to come in here and put down uh, my ink first, let's do that. I'll put some red on here and I'll create just a blob of red and, you know, while I'm here, let me just put some yellow in there and I'll put some, a blob of yellow. And now if I were to come in here again and add the alcohol on top of these, it changes pretty dramatically what ends up happening here. And now as I roll these down the paper, I can change the overall effect of the colors and how they mix together. Now you're going to want to experiment with this obviously because this is not you know necessarily high art here. This is more of an experiment or proof of concept. But what I want to share with you what's really cool about this is first of all the alcohol evaporates more quickly than the water does as you might imagine. And it also creates a very different look and feel and after effect because it gets a little bit more mottled with the colors when they mix together and not necessarily in these solid blocks. So anyway, just something to share with you regarding how you might work with India inks if you want to play around with other soluble materials like water and in this case rubbing alcohol can give you some really cool outcomes. So let me get these out of the way because today's project is not going to involve mixing our colors, not in that way at least. Instead, I want to create a polychromatic piece of artwork and I'm going to use a whole bunch of different colors. Let me just move some things into place here. I have my palette, which has pretty much got a Roy G. Biv thing going for it right now. All right, so I have some red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, or teal, in this case purple, and I have some black as well if we're going to need that. And the goal for this piece is to create something that is what we refer to in, in the artistic community as making marks. And marks are basically repeated patterns or something that allows us to come in here and to be able to um, just, you know, create colors, nothing really advanced. I'm going to create lines actually, and I'll show you what this is going to look like. Let me just clean my brush off here. By the way, I'm using about a, a 3 8 inch brush. It's, uh, it's, it's, fairly, it's fairly narrow. And on my paper, I've already, in essence, gridded it out. And I've come in three inches from the sides and the top and the bottom just to give ourselves a little bit of a framework. And then I've divided this up by two inch strips. So with a quarter inch in between each one, two inches. And what I want to do is I want to take my paintbrush and I'm going to go into my colors. And I'll start with red since that's kind of at the, at the forefront here. And what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to paint a line from the top line to the bottom of the line. I'm just going to try to not be exact. That's not my goal. My goal is just to make sure it's within a range. And I'm not going to, of course, just paint red, 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 red. Let me get a little bit more in my palette here. But I'm going to come in here and uh, let me just kind of randomly throw some of these strips in here. I'll put one right here and bring it down. And again, I want to just kind of do what I can to create a red line that will go here. And uh, no right answer as to how many I put in each of my lines. I'm going to distribute them throughout the piece of artwork best I can. And uh, if they're a little organic, uh, by, by that I mean kind of wiggly, it's all good. Well, we want to make sure that doesn't happen, however. We want to be very careful and control how much of the ink ends up in the brush because the last thing we want to have happen is have a, a drop fall off our brush onto our piece of work while we're working on it because then well then we cry into our hands and it's just ugly nobody wants to see that so let's be careful with how we uh, approach this and slow and steady is going to work just fine for us and again make sure you don't do something you know like put your arm in something you've already painted because uh, I'm not going to name names I know somebody who's done that before all right and I'm just coming in here again I'm just creating kind of some random lines that we can work with here and this will be the foundation of the red color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to follow it up by putting in additional lines. And I'm going to come in fairly close to the lines I've already created. Let me show you what that's going to look like. You know, I'll grab a color like green here. Something that will contrast with the red. And if I come in here and say, okay, now that I have a red color, I'm going to put a green line right next to it that looks kind of like that. Okay? And uh, I don't want to do that, of course always next to the red. Sometimes the green will just be where it ends up. But the objective here is to eventually fill this entire sheet with these lines of color. And so as I come in here and choose different colors, again, I'm going to try to do my best to just create straight lines between those two 
top and bottom pencil lines. And from time to time, I might just take a break and let it dry so I don't end up rubbing my arm through it. Because seriously, this is going to be the, the biggest challenge I'm going to face today is that I will put my elbow into something or my wrist into something and not realize it until I've tracked it across everything. And then I, then I, then I feel bad about myself. And yeah, we don't need that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to this, and uh, you guys don't have to watch every single line being dropped down because that's not necessarily fun. But I do encourage you to be able to try this out yourself. Again, it's a simple technique. You don't have to have mad art skills to be able to draw a line with a paintbrush and some India inks. Okay, as you can see, we're, we're getting toward the end here. It takes a little bit of time. Again, it's one of those fun things to do if uh, you just put on uh, your favorite music or uh, a recorded book or something like that and just sit and enjoy the process. I'm trying to find these narrow gaps, not too many of them left, and I'm trying to find colors that will actually work to, to fill those up. Now, as you can probably see, there's no rhyme or reason, and that's really the objective here. It is really kind of a randomized approach to dropping these colors into place here. And uh, we're just trying to create uh, an interrelationship between these colors as they sit on these different shelves, if you will, with one another. And uh, it just gives us an opportunity to have this blast of color. Brushes down, step away, nobody gets hurt. Uh, yeah, so what we've basically done is we've come in here and we've created uh, this series of lines, right? These are marks. And so by using this India ink, we can come in here and we can just paint these lines. Now, with regard to the pencil lines, we're saving these for an upcoming video on erasers. We're going to talk about erasers and the eraser shootout. We're going to talk about different types of art erasers and how they work. And so that will be uh, something coming up in the next few weeks. But for right now, I'm really happy with how this has turned out. And I'll clean this up and show you what the final looks like as we post this. But again, what I wanted to share with you today is how easy it is to use India inks pretty much as, as paint really sharp colors and look really good on any wall and that's the objective. So I want you to give it a try if you can again I'll leave a link in the description below as to where you can pick up these inks and you know just a, a, a thin paintbrush and you're off and running. All right now I hope you've enjoyed what we've covered so far today if this is the kind of thing that makes you happy then we'd invite you to join us. Hit that subscribe button every Friday morning we drop a brand new video to help you understand a little bit more about how you can create your own abstract art and by the way hit that little bell icon that will let us notify you when a new video has dropped. Anyway that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for dropping by and I'll see you next time.